this is Salam PVD from EUPVSEC 2016. We are together with uh, Claude Tunes, I would say one of the pioneers of renewable energies in Europe, also one of the people thanks to whom actually we are here because we are having European leadership in renewable energies and a person who is involved also in EUPVSEC organization in the committees and Claude, today you are very courageous actually. You said, again, I want Europe to be a leader in renewable energies. And then you said that, yes, we did. And you also said, we cannot slow down. Could you just comment on that, Claude? So uh, we, we, we did uh, act, uh, especially uh, basically back uh, so in Germany, uh, Minister Trittin, when he did uh, the renewable German energy law, which was uh, basically really a big promotion of, of uh, PV, but all renewables. And then in 2008, we did at the European level the what we call the Energy and Climate Package, which had 20% uh, uh, renewables, which means doubling of renewables in Europe between 2010 and 2020, uh, and then also 20% energy efficiency. Uh, we set European law basically all EU 28 countries were forced to invest into renewals, so which then also meant that beneath the pioneers, Germany, Denmark and Portugal, uh, the, all the other governments had to invest into renewables and that made Europe uh, the biggest worldwide, the biggest market uh, for renewables. And in photovoltaic, so solar, uh, solar power, basically uh, we have 300 gigawatt of installed solar capacity in the world and one third of all solar panels installed in the world are in Europe, 100 gigawatt. So we delivered that because we had uh, courageous policy decisions in Germany, in Denmark, in Portugal, but also at the, at the European level. Uh, in a certain sense, we were too successful, mm -hmm. at least for certain people. We have now a market which is flat uh, from the demand. So the fact that we have laws on eff eff uh, efficient refrigerators, deep freezers, TVs, and so on. So the electricity demand is not growing anymore, but is flat. And in that power market, which is flat, we introduce 20% new renewables. That has completely changed the dynamics of a market, which was until then dominated by eight or 10 big oligopolies, E.ON and RWE, Vattenfall, uh, ENBV in Germany, EDF and, and Gas de France in France, uh, Iberdrola and DESA in, in, uh, in Spain or in Italy. In Italy. So Quite disruptive. Yeah, it is a disruptive change. And uh, because these oligopolies did not believe in renewables, did not uh, think that the future of the power system will be basically wind and solar, uh, they missed out the occasion to invest into. And now our problem is that they spend all their political uh, influence, and they have a lot of political influence because they are ringing Mrs. Merkel, they are mean, ringing Mr. Hollande. So they, they, they are now telling the most influential policymakers in Europe, please slow down uh, the energy revolution. And my, my analysis is we cannot afford to slow down. We cannot afford because from a climate change perspective, we have to speed up mm -hmm. uh, the closure of coal power plants not only in Europe but worldwide. And when it comes to industry and jobs and the future economy of Europe, um, if we have a too small market in Europe for new PV uh, installations, then we will lose jobs, we will lose research, and we will lose uh, basically to be a leader in what will be the biggest investment in the power and maybe in the energy system Worldwide, because the others they don't sleep actually. Eh? No, uh, China is a country which is not sleeping. U.S. has companies uh, and now also linked with the IT revolution, which are really moving into uh, renewables. Um, Taiwan, South Korea, uh, Japan after the Fukushima Daiichi. Even Middle East, yeah. Uh, yeah, and Middle East is not yet uh, moving into manufacturing, but. Middle East uh, has understood that uh, for them in a certain sense, it's better to 
consume less oil themselves and to sell it to the world market. Okay, so uh, you were mentioning uh, also during this uh, today's press conference, and I, I liked very much this point that we should think about exit strategies. Yes, could you comment on that also? So we have two different sorts of markets. We have mature power markets, which is Europe, but also China and US. You have a lot of existing coal and nuclear. And then in that market, you, have, you try to inject renewables. Uh, that markets uh, have, of course, then a risk of an overcapacity. And in these markets, in a certain sense, the only way to bring more and more renewables into saturated power markets is that you need also to take something out. And I think we need an exit strategy in Europe for coal. Um, and if we do that, we have to be aware that we have still thousands of people working in coal mining and also in coal power plants. So what I want from European Commission is offering financial assistance to help the regions where we have coal. It's some regions in Poland, some regions in Spain, some regions in Romania, Bulgaria, uh, Greece. So it's, we can do this, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it, it must be clear coal has no future in Europe, and, but we must also help these regions. And the second exit strategy which we need is nuclear. That's above all a French story. Mm -hmm. uh, France, we will, so, so in a certain sense, has a known interest also because its power company, ADF, does not have enough money to, to invest in all the nuclear power plants which are now in France. So the, the France has an interest to close down relatively rapidly a certain amount of nuclear power stations, which then will free again space for, for, for new PV and for new wind. So Claude, uh, in 2008 you were a reporter uh, for the renewable energy law uh, for the directive. And what is uh, the current uh, situation with the new directive. Could you comment on that? The existing legislation will run until 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have another four or five years where we have a stable framework. The new legislation will, will then run from uh, end of 2020 until 2030. This new legislation will be drafted by European Commission between now and the end of the year. And then in 2017 and 18, it will be negotiated between us as members of European Parliament and the 28 governments of uh, the European Union. And if you compare the situation right now with all the negotiations which were before the first um, directive, if you compare the behavior of different actors involved, how would you uh, comment on that? How would you compare the behavior? And what is your expectation, actually? What will be the final result? So uh, back in 2008, we had a very positive, uh, basically, mood. Uh, that was much, much, very much linked to Al Gore's film about uh, the inconvenient truth. We had a report. Uh, so it was the days where I think broader public, but also policymakers, first understood climate change is damn serious and we have to move. Mm -hmm. And renewables can be an answer to that. Um, at that time, uh, photovoltaics was, so solar, solar power was probably five times more expensive than it is today. And wind was also more expensive. So our challenge is that uh, we have been very successful with our legislation from 2008 on renewables on energy efficiency. This has brought disruptive change to the whole electricity industry. They are angry because we, we, they have the impression that I think uh, that at the beginning they were laughing at us, no? Yeah, in the beginning, uh, when you went to Mr. Gossman from RWE, the CEO, or to, they said, okay, give the Greens a bit of playground, 2-3%. But they, they didn't understand that the learning curves for, for renewables were so, so, uh, so going down. So these companies, and especially their management, have made disastrous investment strategies. They have not invested into renewables, they invested into coal and, and some of them trying to, to invest into nuclear. So uh, now they are trying, uh, in a certain sense, to slow down mm -hmm. uh, the, process. the process, whereas, and, and in a certain sense, we need to, to, to create also a win-win strategy. These companies are probably too big to fail, uh, and too powerful, uh, they will not allow us to go ahead. So we need to see now 
can we transform these old, uh, dirty, risky portfolio companies into something modern, which is energy services um, for, for renewables? The good thing is that, for example, E.ON in Germany has now understood that uh, the future is helping people to manage or to invest into photovoltaic so solar, solar power, or, for example, helping commercial operators like supermarkets to reduce energy, uh, basically, and to invest into renewables. So it will be a new energy world, and in the next months, uh, we will need to sit together with, with power companies to s say to them, look, you were wrong in the past, uh, you will have to adapt to the new world. But you have we still opportunity, have, act, actually. Yes, they will have opportunity, especially because today electricity is only 20% of the market. Uh, now electricity will go into the transport sector, and this movement is even quicker than I expected as a result of diesel gate, so this biggest ever industrial fraud, uh, which basically comes with a lot of uh, stress on health for citizens living in European big cities, uh, this will uh, basically speed up electromobility. That is an opportunity to reach over to renewables. Uh, and a second area where we can grow in a certain sense, the electricity market is in heating and cooling, where, where heat pumps and others can also be more prominent. But electric cars and heat pumps make only sense if they are linked to green energy, and green energy is PV or wind. Exactly. And uh, Claude, uh, you are one of the pioneers of renewable energies. What was the reason, actually, that you get interested by this topic? I think it was, uh, on one hand, my fascination for technology, mm -hmm. and on the other hand, I, I, I uh, had in a, in, in a study, which I, 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 an exam which I had to learn, back in, uh, it was in 88, 89, I, I, I choose to, uh, to learn for the exam uh, the report of the German Bundestag on, on climate change, of the Enquete Commission on Climate Change. That was a 350 pages document. Mm -hmm. After having read that, basically, personally, I came to the conclusion, climate change is damn serious, and this is my generation which has to solve this in order to leave a planet which is livable for the next generation. So since that, uh, I understood that climate change, we have to act. And if we want to act on climate change, it's about energy efficiency, renewable energy, and uh, modern grid and ICT. And that is exactly what I'm working on since then. And it was maybe also one of the reasons why you founded Euphorus, yes? Yeah, so and Euphorus is, is uh, EU for renewables, mm -hmm. so EU for RES. Um, and this is a network of members of European Parliament mm -hmm. uh, who are engaged in climate change, renewable energy, energy efficiency. Uh, but it's also a network which bridges between European policy making and national policy making. And on 8 and 9 of uh, October uh, of 2016, we will do our next interparliamentary meeting with more than 100 members of national parliaments and European parliaments, meeting European commissioners, meeting CEOs from major power companies, uh, meeting experts, uh, meeting ministers from Germany, from uh, Romania, from Lithuania, from Denmark, to discuss uh, this rollout of the power system and, in a certain sense, the energy system of Europe of the next 15 years. Okay, but I don't have to ask you if you believe uh, that 100% of renewables can be achievable, because I believe that <laughs> this is also one of your uh, discourse. And could you just, in bullet points, tell us shortly, why do you believe so? Why do you believe in 100% of renewables? Yeah, because uh, the technology, we are in, in a modern age. So in a certain sense, uh, such a smartphone, mm -hmm. so it would have been impossible to have a decentralized energy system without uh, the, the information and communication technologies. Now a smartphone has more computer uh, power than uh, even large computers of 25 years ago. So the combination of decentralized technology like uh, solar power, wind power, biogas and others, uh, with 
uh, energy efficiency so we can build zero energy houses. And if we combine that with smartness, mm -hmm. then we have a perfect mix to, to basically solve two of the biggest problems of this world. One is climate change, so dangerous pollution of the atmosphere. And the second is access to energy. So I want also Europe to do now a big program to help Africa to go electricity in their villages, which is good for them and which is good for us. Uh, if we want, in a certain sense, to control or to have a better control of migration without doing a big program on renewable energy in Africa, basically young Africans, they will go to the light and the first light for them, if Africa doesn't have light, the first light is in Europe. Exactly. So, Claude, uh, uh, I think that uh, you are coming to uh, UPV sex since a lot of years, yes? Uh, it's my, I, I have been here several times. For me, it's, uh, it's really important because I get first-hand information. Where is the technology? Where is the industry? What can we do as policymakers? But a second thing which I uh, each time want to do, I want to thank researchers. A policymaker has interviews, exactly. he, he has a, he's a bit famous, at least in his country, so he gets a reward from yes. citizens, from, from media. And I researchers want, are always behind, yeah? Yeah, and I, so researchers are working in their lab, and I say to them, you are uh, as valuable, and sometimes you have a higher value for the future of the planet than a lot of policymakers. Exactly. And what would, we, what would be your advice for organizers of UPVSEC in the future? Uh, probably it is important now that uh, it's no more about a single technology, it's about a system change. So what we need to do is, uh, PV set, so the, the conference should also uh, basically, for example, integrate, speak more about how do we uh, build a market where the center of the market is wind and solar, because that must be a different market structure than the one where coal and nuclear was in the center. And the other issue is, of course, grid and grid integration so we i think pvsec needs to me uh, much more also about uh, how do we build the grid mm -hmm. hardware and software uh, in at the village level at the uh, let's say national level but also beyond borders a grid which can then integrate as quick, uh, quickly as possible 100% renewable energy 100% renewable energies great goal and i think uh, Claude we will be following you up until the moment when we reach this goal. And I wish you this uh, yeah, all so the best. That, and that this, this we can reach also thanks to guys like you. And yeah. uh, I would like to thank you for that. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much, Claude. <laughs> that was Solar PV TV together with Claude Turmes, one of the pioneers of renewable energies and the person who promised us 100% of renewable energies. <laughs>